Hey guys, what's up? Roshi is here, trying to keep this short and sweet. Today we're taking a look at my even hand buff deck. I should probably... It's not even, wow. Uh, my Xenon hand buff deck. I should change the name to be more normal. We actually started out testing Catra and I ended up cutting it. Uh, but this is the list. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I did not do as uh, crazy as I would have liked in the event, but we ran into some really tough matchups and... Yeah, I probably would have ran this deck again in the event if I had the choice. Uh, although with full hindsight, I think, you know, I'm sure I could pick the best possible deck that I could have played at the event. But I still really like this deck. It's solid. I'll try and keep this quick, like I said. Uh, we're looking to curve out here. We've got a Cantha, Vine Grafter, Interrogator, Blade Moth, Reappropriator, a Rock, and Tazbu. Uh, pretty solid like mid-range threats and bodies going on here. Acantha is pretty good at every stage of the game but the start, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but if you're able to get her down and start attacking and somehow pr protect her, uh, eventually she'll be uh, making blockers and flying overhead and really annoy your opponent. Uh, other than that, we've got Makar's Quiver. Uh, this is kind of the bread and butter of the deck. Uh, early on, it kills things. We can also just play it turn two and let it buff all our guys. Uh, you can go turn two Quiver into turn three Interrogator, and it's a very solid start to a game. Uh, I've been testing out Grodov's Burden in this slot. Uh, I've tried a few other cards. Uh, this is great. If they're not playing any sort of Relicate at all, uh, you'll quickly snowball away from the game with this. It'll let you draw cards every turn. Uh, if we're ever at eight power, we can also use it to uh, start... We can use it to pop some annoying threat on the board for free, which is great. Uh, with our deck, though, we do tend to gum down the board and try and win the game like through combat with our units. Uh, I wanted to use something like Curtain Call, but it just wasn't happening consistently enough, especially when we've skewed our power to play Acantha. Uh, maybe there's a world where I just don't try and force cards like Acantha, and maybe we play like Twin Spiteling or something instead and be just more like Xenon. But I think these Ascending cards are pretty strong. Uh, I'll probably keep it like this for now. Maybe in the future I'll experiment with a more like neutral Xenon list that's not all in on one side or the other and see how that does for me. But, you know, I'm such a big fan of Tazbu and Acantha that, you know, you, you gotta pick your poison basically and this is the poison I picked. Uh, Shadow Etchings and Exploit and Vara's Favor serve to make sure that we're hitting all of our power drops during the game. Uh, Exploit will help us out against any sort of combo deck that doesn't have Aegis. Uh, if they do have Aegis, well, you might be already dead. But, uh, you know, this is a card you really need to have access to, especially in Throne. There's a lot of combo decks flying around. Uh, a lot of, like, really just instant win threats. And you can't afford to just deal with them when they hit the board, because sometimes that's too late. So, exploit. Uh, other than that, you might have seen the explosive potential. Uh, if you play explosive potential on a rock, it turns him into a 5-3. This makes a rock come down and play 5 razor bots with deadly. Uh, that just <laughs> wrecks the board really hard. Uh, you can also use it to buff, like, Reappropriator and maybe steal your opponent's Grodov's Burden or buff the crap out of an Interrogator. Um, you know, Razor Shaper isn't the only card we need to buff. Oftentimes it will take our whole turn, so maybe, like, turn four or five we'll play this and it will buff, like, two or three minions. And if you don't die after doing that, uh, a rock's gonna come down and just wreck the board. Uh you know, maybe you're buffing like a Blight Moth or a Reappropriator and a Kantha, and you just fly over your opponent's head for like big damage every turn. Uh, that's such a crazy clock. Or you can even just use it to just, you know, buff Interrogator and start drawing your cards. So uh, it's a pretty neat card. Whether or not it's better than something like Xenon Obelisk remains to be seen, but the ability and the potential to curve Explosive Potential into a rock is uh, quite nice. Uh, with all of our card draw too, it's not that out of the picture to set this up later on in the game. You don't necessarily need the curve into it for it to be fine. Uh, okay, for the market, uh, Dark Return, this just synergizes very well with, once again, buffing the crap out of units. 
Edict of Makar. I wanted super cheap kill spells. Uh, just whenever you're playing a Vine Grafter market, like we do have Shadow Etchings, but particularly with Vine Grafter, you really want like some one power effects that you can go grab so that, you know, turn two, you play this, and then maybe turn four, you can go to your market and get a removal spell immediately, uh, maybe trigger a regen to something, and not really fall too far behind on the board while you're, you know, spending power to activate this. Since we're not playing Merry Mandrake and we can't reduce the cost, uh, filling our market with some one-drop spells is the best way to do it. Uh, Edict of Makar is going to target most decks in the meta, so, yep, yeah, that's the reason why. Silverblade Menace, uh, I've been testing this out just as a, an answer to Horu Kira. Uh, originally I was playing Varas in the main deck to make Silverblade Menace able to punch through. Uh, I've just been testing random things in this market, tr trying to find what I like. Uh, potentially Silverblade Menace could be a card like Waylay, if you're tired of playing against decks like uh, Eccentric Officer or Reanimator. You can really build your market to counter whatever you want. Uh, other good cards to consider in your market, you could put Speaking Circle in here, you could put Dizo's Office in here, you can put, if you're annoyed with Flyers, there's that uh, Slime Spitter Slug we could put in our market, and then, um, yeah. I opted for Akaria. When I was playing Dizo's Office, I noticed I wasn't always able to protect it as well as I liked. So I liked how Akaria was just kind of a nice one-and-done threat. Comes down, kills a thing, either pops their Aegis or pops their hand, and uh, is able to block. So that's why I went for Akaria. Uh, Silverblade Menace, if you can ever pull this off, will slam the door on a lot of games if they don't have Aegis. And uh, Vara's there as just late-game synergy. If you ever have 8 power... I'm assuming by that stage in the game, you've probably played a few Arocs. Vara will come down, bring back your Arak, trigger a bunch of shadow units entering play, and thus you'll be able to, similar to what uh, Reanimator do, decks do with a Zindel, uh, you'll be filling your board with your Void in no time flat. So that's why Vara's in the market. It's just such a high value play um, that even though it, it might be a bit of a stretch to get to 8 power, if you ever do get to 8 power, it's really nice to have a threat that just dumps value for days on the board, uh, which is why we're playing Vara over Azindal. So that's the list. Uh, after this, I'll probably... Um, I'll probably be trying out other iterations of this. We've tried out Stone Scar so far. Uh, that was pretty good. I noticed Stone Scar was a little better against Aggro, and uh, like other mid-range lists, whereas this is a little better against combo and like stuff like Clear the Way because we're playing like main deck send an agent. If you ever play against the Clear the Way deck with our deck, we just annoy them so much. We curve like Exploit and send an agent into Reappropriator and just steal their relics. And if it goes well, they won't ever even pull the Clear the Way combo off, or we just strip it from their hand. So. If you're ever looking for a matchup that just crushes Clear the Way and crushes aggro, this is the deck for you. If you're tired of playing against Yetis, just play this. You'll just have Vine Grafters and Blight Moths, Reappropriators, like even a raw 1-3 of Rock is fantastic. You know, we've got Vara's Favor, Send an Agent, Makar's Quiver, so much unit hate that if you're playing against a deck with units, you're really going to enjoy this list. Uh, even against Tribal, it can really shine. So, uh, yeah, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I am not sponsored by anyone, so I'm going to go ahead and shout out to my sponsors myself. You guys should check me out on Twitch if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube if you have not. Join my Discord if you have not. Uh, we've been brewing this deck all weekend myself. Uh... Ozone, a few other guys from the Discord, uh, really cool place, come brew decks with us. I probably wouldn't have been able to make this deck as good as I had without the fine, fine folks from my Discord. So this is me recruiting you to come help me build better memes. Thanks, guys.